away from me. All right. But, yeah, so this is, okay. Okay, hello. Okay, we're, we're going live. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to News What News here on Q4 Radio. Oh, I, that, I had a P Peter Brady moment. Oh, Q4, Q4 Radio? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Q4 Radio, you can also find us on uh, TuneIn, iTunes. Uh, we're on AM 1680. Uh, you can also go to Q4.org. I'm your host, Darren Marshall, here with... The uh, lovely and tall Thomas Bombs. Hello, Thomas. Hey, Darren Marshall. It's so good to be on your show. Happy Tuesday. It's a nice, chilly, cold, cold day here in I Chicago. Know. And the uh, lovely and not as tall <laughs> Rachel Bloomstrom. Hey, how Woo! you doing? <laughs> how are y'all doing? And not as tall. Um, he means like a, a foot shorter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's got to be a solid foot difference in height between Thomas us. Thomas is a tall guy. <laughs> I'm actually only six one, but there we oh, go. Oh, okay. So Talk my bad. Um, eleven inches. <laughs> oh, girl, what, 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 what you auditioned for? What's going on with your life, Rachel Bloomstrom? <laughs> now, um, I have to say, Rachel, thank you so much for driving us here, and thank you for so much for not killing us. But. <laughs> Don't we, we ask had, there, there were many, many moments of stupidity, and you will not tolerate it at no. all. Yeah, you are the um, oh god, the, the 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 British woman who was in the first impeachment trial, and they started talking conspiracies, and she's like, "We're not going to talk about that. That doesn't exist. You're making up BS." Like that. That's kind of your driving. It's like I will not tolerate any sense of stupidity, and I will pass you. I will honk at Thank you, you and yeah. Thomas grab a soda can. I'm, and, and, and unfortunately, today I only traveled with a plastic bottle. I threw it at the car, but it didn't have <laughs> no, much didn't. of its impact. Now, I do have to admit, the person in front of you, the older, really dumb woman, who was in the middle lane, but then she made a right turn, but she crossed her on the right... Uh, on the right lane? Oh, yeah, she could not drive. Well, she didn't she know she was going to turn. There was no blinker or anything. I was just... So, she, she had somebody so in her back. Thomas she has talking. things to say um, about my driving, and it's true. I don't tolerate... Any BS, like, because it just drives me crazy how little attention people pay and, like, how inconsiderate. And it's just, to me, like, a, a very good reminder always of how people are actually operating in life when you, like, you meet yeah. them and they're, like, smiling and stuff. But, like, really, they'll, they don't no, care. No. They'll cut you off if they feel like it. There, there, there was a uh, thing on Twitter that I saw, a meme, about shopping carts. You could tell... The quality of the oh, person yeah. by whether or not they actually put the shopping cart back where the shopping cart belongs. Obviously, cart's assuming that they are able bodied. Yeah. Fully, yeah. Yeah. So I've heard about that too. And the whole thing is if um, somebody doesn't return, like it's just showing who they are because there's no consequences or rewards for your action. Yeah. Um, no, that's true. That yeah. is true. I am definitely a return cart person. I also usually like will shove all the ones that are catty corner in there and like make them in a line again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I make sure that some people just toss them in there. I make sure that I push them so that they're all the way together, so that more carts can yeah. be pushed in there. I'm, uh, that's me. Yeah. yeah, same. It's it's a little bit, um, and, and funny enough, uh, someone texts us as we're streaming somewhere about, do you want to read about Jesus? Are we okay? Are, are we good? Anyway, they kept talking about religious and, and God and everything like that, and I was like... Um, I, I was not raised with religion, but like the whole shopping cart thing is like, what kind of karma do you want to give out? Yeah. Like, do yeah. you want to put something away? Thank you for helping me shop. I, I'm going to carry on or someone else will get it. It's the same with litter that like, I don't litter. I, I always make sure I try to find a trash can, throw stuff away versus something like first season Mad Men where they go to they park at a picnic and they all eat on the blanket and then they kind of just dump the blanket on the side of the road, all the trash, and get their car and drive away because oh. they don't think about the litter behind. They're just going for it and what you have. 
How can and you so, not think about it, though? I'm just, I mean, I did grow well, up with Don't Mess With Texas. And I yeah. do want to mention that even though I grew up religiously, I am not religious. Well, just, what, what, what I wanted to get with Rachel is you brought out this really fabulous song about <laughs> Father Abraham and his son. And, like, you started oh, doing my. these, like, dance moves. Yeah. And I realized it's basically a version of the hokey yes. pokey for Jesus. Yes, yes. We, and, we and, hokeyed for Jesus. And I have to ask, like, what is the lesson? Because, again... Again, I had to remind myself, like, so in the Bible, again, not raised with religion. So Abraham's the dad that got that badass child that acted up so much that Abraham took him to the top of the mountain and said, God told me to kill you. Yeah. And then he got a sign from Just something. Just in time. Like, hey, don't kill your child. Just kill that little lamb over there instead. And, and so then, then took the child, like, back home. And I know... Family Guy one time did a joke about it of um, the kids like, what is that about? But that's led to believe that like, the kid was actually a well-behaved child. But like, Jesus, I love you so much. Let me kill my firstborn. Um, well, that's that's what <laughs> well, made it harder because he really loved his son. Didn't he have other kids too, but that was his favorite? I think so. I think that's what it was. So you're not supposed to show favoritism to your to other yeah, children? Yeah, but, but there's put, a whole lot of... Put God first. There's a whole lot of... Put God first. God there's a whole lot of issues with, with the Bible. There's God a whole lot of issues favorites. with the Bible. So, and uh, there's so, things that aren't in the Bible that are in the Bible, <laughs> yeah, for some reason. Um, no, Lots of confusion. I, I one time dealt with someone who's like, you know, Samuel, the story of Samuel. Like, I don't know the story of Samuel. I don't. I, I um, yeah, I'm confused. To to go to um, okay, back to you, Darren. Yeah, Sorry. to piggyback on the on the whole uh, shopping cart thing. The other thing there is that um, people will leave them there and say, "Oh, that's their job." Yes. Yeah. And and that's, that's that seems that's to be true. that's but but to a degree, if you keep piling up enough work for people to do, it ends up you know, being tough. I really would like to get this notion that hard work is a virtue and that everybody needs to work hard. That is like such a Puritan thing. Like the whole <laughs> point of technology is to alleviate the burden on human beings so that we can have less work and work on things greater than ourselves and spirituality and become better human beings. But rich people just well, like see, it when see, we're here's, slaves. Here's, here's my thing. Um, you know, uh, as far as retail goes, oh. if you... Here's a for instance. If you are in a clothing store, sells clothing, and you come in with your Starbucks, and not only do you spill some on some of the clothes, but you leave your Starbucks cup there, and then you, say, you that, that's, that's their job to clean that up. No. See, see and that's no. the thing. People over the years have pushed the limits as to what is acceptable. Yes. And because they've pushed, they've gone overboard. They've gone a little overboard. Well, and the thing is, like, why, even if it is their job, why do you feel so entitled <laughs> that you can put extra burden on them? Like, their job is to return them. Their job isn't to go searching all around the parking lot. They're just supposed to bring the carts in. You're just making additional work that's not actually... <laughs> necessary. Yeah, it's yeah, not it's actually. Not necessary. That's not what their job was supposed to be. Their job's not supposed to be clean up to, after you. Yeah, <laughs> and, and chase yeah. down like your messes. Like, ugh. yeah. Well, there's also the flip side that you recognize something like a, a shopping cart, very basic. It has wheels. Sometimes these things move. Sometimes they move and hit another car. Yeah. Which I've I've dealt with those people who don't put their shopping cart away, and suddenly. Uh, while they were shopping, someone who didn't put their car away, car had gone and hit their car. Perfect. And it's it, it becomes a, an issue of what kind of karma, what kind of energy are you you getting out there? Um, and, and and sadly, we <laughs> you, you talk about like working hard is a virtue. I was always told like make sure you work smart, not hard. Yeah. And I, I wish I had worked smart a little bit more than I had in the past instead of working hard, but. Those were the lessons I had to learn. And again, we, we as a culture, we don't recognize that life's about lessons and you learn things. And, and sometimes when you touch the oven and it's hot and you burn your fingertips, you learn not to put your, your hand on the oven. And that's okay um, to have and been we don't, wrong. We yeah. don't blame the oven for being hot if you're using it to cook. But 
Uh, we now live in a society that's one of those, I touch a hug off and I well, can't believe well, it. Well, we live in a society where depending on like what your association is, if they tell you that the oven wasn't hot and it shouldn't have burned you, you can't say that it burned you, so therefore you can't learn that lesson. You just got to stay there with your hand on a hot oven to prove that you are one of them. We've gone so, so crazy lately. <laughs> so, so I remember ages ago there was this thing called the Darren Awards, and we were putting chlorine in the gene pool. And I, I hate to say, whenever I hear of an anti-vaxxer dying or a COVID denier dying of COVID, like I, I their family can mourn. I feel real bad. But at some point, this might be the, like the new chlorine in the gene pool. Yeah, I have a so. family member who I think has had COVID three times now and said they're still not getting back. And it's like yeah. really hard to well, you've made your like, life choice, though. feel bad about it. And, and that's the issue we run into is people make their life choice, but then things go bad. Um, on my way here, looking at MSN and letters to the editor, someone blatantly said, like, if you're an anti-vaxxer and you think COVID's a hoax, why don't you just stay home and not take the hospital bed for someone who just had a heart Thank attack? Thank you. Yeah, because you don't have uh, COVID according to you. And it, it, it then pushes a more thought-provoking process, again, of us versus them, of, oh, I'm now smart and entitled because I went somewhere. I went to a bus and someone shoved a needle in me so I could then go to Memphis to go to an event where I would be one of the thinner, thinner ones. And don't look at me today. I am very bloated. I must be <laughs> on my monthly, honey. I is bloated in ways I'm like, oh, well, I hope I make it. Men do have hormonal cycles. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, no, yeah. That's a like, thing. I'm, I'm yeah. extra bloated today. There's a thing uh, called andropause, which I can vouch for. That. <laughs> it's oh, the, you can tell us to, about to, it. To yeah. then hang out with it's men who would be bigger version, than me and, and eventually get backhanded. But that that's just my own business. Um, so I'm, I'm not, when I, when I say, speak these things, like I, I don't want to be a COVID denier. I'm just aware of where we are, how we're acting and what's going forward. And, um, even now, uh, I heard recently like, oh, things are going to clear up by April. It's like, oh, so that Easter request was valid. We just didn't have it. Anyway, I, let me get off my soapbox. I'm sorry, Darren <laughs> Marshall. Do you want some lotion, baby? We'll no, put some I'm, lotion I'm on fine. the skin and then you'll be young again? I, I am fine. Okay. Um, but going back to the whole, uh, the whole uh, <laughs> retail uh, surface industry thing, uh, over the weekend, a video came out of a man who uh, was screaming and yelling at four teenage girls who worked at a smoothie bar. Uh, and... He got so mad, he threw the smoothie at one of the girls. Wow. And then uh, went around the counter, called one of them an effing immigrant. <laughs> Is that? That's the word he used? Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. And then, oh, no. <laughs> and then as they were trying to call 911, he tried to force himself into the back. The back of what? Where okay. Their workspace. Where that they, is the, crazy. he tried to push open the door. Now that's that's not the crazy part. Here's the crazy oh, that's part. Not the, that's just the Karen moment. We then got to the guy lost his job. His job was for Merrill Lynch, where he worked at for 27 years as one of their top uh, uh, financial officers. Oh wow! And he lost his job because that went viral, um, and then. Uh, apparently, uh, it came out that his kid had a peanut allergy. Oh, no. And so he was buying a smoothie to kill his own child. Thank he you. He was buying hey. a smoothie to kill his own child, but he decided to beat up three 14-year-old girls on his way there. No, I, not that's, that's a number. That's answer 42. I feel like 14, I zoned out. For, I feel like I zoned out for something important. <laughs> <laughs> I was just inviting See, people to watch that's this the show. Whole thing. I zoned out on it because I saw the video. Not any, not not once did he mention a the child, b peanuts, <laughs> and <laughs> I feel like I missed something very major in this yeah, story. And apparently, he the uh, from what uh, what the reports are saying on the receipt that he gave to police, it said it was a peanut butter smoothie, <laughs> and it's like, and and they okay, and, wow. 
in, in the police report, uh, well, the smoothie had peanut butter in it. And there were a lot of questions that came up on, on this. First of all, why is he there yelling at, at these girls instead of with his child who was in the hospital, according to him? Um, and what, I forgot. What was he yelling at the girls about? Uh, he, he, was, he was basically yelling at them. Was he, was who, he, was who, the, sold me, who sold me this smoothie? Who sold me this smoothie? I want to talk to the person who sold this. Uh, they're not here. I want to talk to the manager. I want to talk to the manager. Uh, that manager's not here either. Uh, what's the problem, and, and what sir? What's wrong with this smoothie? Well, was... well, uh, see, that's the thing. He says it was because it had peanuts in it, and his son had peanut allergy. I'm calling BS. On but that. he ordered okay. a peanut butter. I'm There's... calling BS. Not just because of that. <laughs> not just because of that. Because I've worked in the service industry long enough to know that there will be people out there that will use any excuse to show their quote-unquote superiority over employees that they think there's, of us there's lesser. There's something wrong here. Yeah. Um, number one, like, why are you, why was this so much drama? Yeah. It didn't need to be that much drama. It's one of those, and I've, I've been that place, like, I, 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 when, you've been out with me, Darren, I've been like, I, I'll have a vodka seven and a glass of water. No. There has been like once or twice where I end up like with a vodka water and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I said vodka and seven up and a glass of water. Like yeah. I want my water back. I apologize for the confusion. They laugh. They, they do it. Either I finish it or I don't like if it becomes a point, usually they'll replace it. So, so that's a question for the work staff. Usually they'll replace it, but at that point, like, we move on. Yeah. And, and even in November when I was in Las Vegas seeing um, Eric J. Richards, fellow comedian. Hi, yeah. shout out to you, Hi, Eric. Eric. And I went to, he wanted to do the diner, but I ended up having a late salad, so I wasn't hungry, but I saw the matzo ball soup. Well, their matzo ball soup was actually a very tiny matzo ball and a whole lot of a chicken <laughs> vegetable soup. So I thought they gave me the wrong soup, only to find out, like, oh, he just wants more broth with the very small matzo ball. But we resolved it, and I ate the matzo ball soup, and then it, I felt awkward because I had to ask someone up to my hotel room because I didn't want to use the local the downstairs <laughs> casino bathroom. And then, like, I didn't know how to tell him, like, how to wait outside, so he hid my room. As I go in the bathroom, I'm like, God... There's no fan. So you got to run the faucet. Oh, God. Because that soup was that good. Oh, okay. But I did not feel the need to verbally assault <laughs> or accost uh, 14-year-olds. Yeah. Well, well then, she got so, hit so in that's the head. Like, okay, I got the wrong shake. Can you give me another shake? People she, get orders wrong all the time. He literally threw the cup with the stuff in it and hit her in the head. Well, and so, there was well, that lady who uh, a couple of weeks ago threw hot soup on the worker. Yeah. Luckily, it had been long enough that it wasn't too hot, but there was like no placating that woman. She just wanted to be mad. She wanted to return it. There was nothing she was going to like make her happy. They tried. She just and, wanted to throw again, it in And again, this is this is something that was pre-Trump. Everybody, Everybody's like saying we see more of this. I, I have this to is agree. Pre-Trump. I, I worked in the hospitality industry from um, 1996 to uh, 2000. It's, it's an industry that I realized I should never have gotten into and probably don't need to work that. And before that, I worked at 7-Eleven. Um, I started young. I was negative, too, because I'm 24. <laughs> anyway... Um, what is happening is the low-level behaviors of customers of customer service are now reaching levels of different types of business. They're working their way up. Like 7-Eleven, gas stations, no one's ever nice to you. No one's ever friendly. You do your best to work out. And, and what I like, hopefully, when I go to a gas station is I hope the gas pump works. I hope if I go inside and buy something, I am able to purchase it and leave. And I hope that the bathroom is on some kind of level that when I use it, I don't feel I have to bathe in bleach. Um, that's my hope. But people back then, like I remember uh, some woman blatantly broke a 7-Eleven glass bottle on the floor. She then told me as she checked out, I said, uh, thank you. I saw that and we'll get it fixed. And then as I checked out the other customers, again, 7-Eleven, she stood there and said, you didn't thank me enough for making you, a, making you aware. 
And I'm like, yeah, I had that happen to me recently. Thank you. Have a good day. Day. Like, I probably per- did, did like, like, whole purse my lips, like, oh, we really gonna have this. Yeah. We really gonna have this. That's like Rachel telling me my cat on fire, and she's sitting right there by the garden hose. It's like, oh, oh okay, thank you. I, I, I had, think she slit my cat tail. Like, it's like, girl. I had, I had a situation with that. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. I had, I had a woman who was, uh, who was with her husband, and she kept insulting me while I was trying to ring her up. And then she stood there after insulting me, and she goes, you're supposed to thank me. And I'm like, uh... Have a good day. Yeah. And her husband stood there laughing, She's and she's like, ma'am, you, you're, you, we just went through a whole bunch of stuff, and you want me to thank... And her, his, her husband was trying to get her to... Come on, honey. Because yeah. she knows she misbehaves, she, yeah. and at some point... And, and this... Yeah. It rarely happens, and that's why it makes the news when it does, when a customer service person has finally had enough. Um, I, I, yeah. Due to my background, I, I remember one time in the hotel industry where one guy had a complaint against me, but he came up with his two drunk friends, and after the 12th FU, I had finally lost it. And I, I hindsight, I hate to say this, it plays in my head a little bit too much. Hindsight's twenty twenty is the two people who actually had rooms. I should have been like, okay, what's your name? What's your num- What's your room number? You find that room very quickly and never talk to me again, or else I will call the police. And what's your uh huh uh huh? And um, I probably should have kicked them out. That I think after the tenth f u, that's like okay, uh, verbal harassment. I'm calling the cops, and we're gonna get rid of you. The other guy, uh, I actually had to say, look, I've apologized. I do not know what more to say to you. Please go. Yeah. And he was one of those, like, he left. And then he came back because he wanted to make sure he could shake my hand. Like, oh, I don't mean to treat people like that. And I was like, just leave. Yeah. Please. That's I am so done with obnoxious. you. so obnoxious. Man, talking about, like, <laughs> horror stories. Oh, um, yeah. Let's, let's share some wounds. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, why not? Because I, I used to bartend and wait tables. Um, and my friend Corey is also talking about how, like, having those situations handles, like, cross the board where he was, too. But um, as, a, as a woman, I feel like I've probably had some slightly different situations to deal with. And um, the first one that came to mind when you just started talking about this is I remember I was waiting tables at this seafood restaurant and I was waiting on this family and it was a it was a husband, wife and kid. And like they were very quiet and the, the wife and kid didn't ever speak was always the guy. And he was like saying like, oh, honey, this and that. And like he like put his hand on my elbow one time and I, I tried to jerk away really very clearly. Like, don't touch me. Um, and then when I finally <laughs> brought out the check. He said, thanks for everything, hon, and then slapped me on my butt in front of the family. And we had had a new rule in the in in that place, like no cussing in the front of the house. You had to be at least all the way in the kitchen. And I walked into the very like middle part of the front of the house and I was like, somebody is gonna wait on that MF. -er. He just grabbed my ass. And like my boss, she was so ready for it. She's like, oh. (laughs) <laughs> like, Let's go out and talk. I'm the man. To say Let me make sure yeah. we get all done. She was, yeah, she was pretty excited <laughs> to handle that. <laughs> but uh, uh, I don't, you know, surprisingly, um, I know I'm just over five two, but I've broken up bar fights pretty easily and avoided, like, you know. You gotta bob and weave. Also, if you're gonna get in there, <laughs> I think you gotta get one foot this way and your hand oh. that other way, like. Put all that distance between them. That's how you do it. That's what I learned. See, my, 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 my go-to move, because uh, there was a long, long time ago when I was like 140 pounds thinner. So my, my go-to move was to always step back a couple of feet, and then you run and you charge, and you just throw your full <laughs> weight at whoever the aggressor is. And I normally, oddly enough, and these were people who were like many inches taller than me, many like over a hundred pounds heavier than me, and I would just have to throw my whole body, barely get them like to nudge a little bit, yeah. And then they would drop whoever they were beating. Like it was, yeah, like, I, okay, let's stop. Let's I definitely stop. had to do that before. <laughs> so it's a good technique. Yeah, just, a little bigger than you, and I needed them to get back, and the other person <laughs> took a step back, and I just took a running <laughs> jump, and was like. Ah! Like just these, throw my flesh just the whole body. Um, <laughs> but so. you, you mentioned something, especially with customer service, and I definitely felt that um, in the sex shops I've worked at, in Seven Eleven, or even the hotel, it's like you do not touch me. Mm-hmm. You do not. 
And, and there's been po points where moments in my life where I've been like, get your hands off me. You need to get your hands off me. Please do not touch me. Get your hands off me. We are not friends. No, I don't want to shake your hands. Get your hands off me. And even be, I, I would, sadly, one of my, my, um, before COVID finally hit and I was in uh, New Orleans, I think it was March 15th, 2020. And I was meeting somebody and he was all like hands on my shoulder. I'm like, I don't know what this is about. Next thing I know, he put his finger in my mouth. What? Yeah, he put his finger, like I thought he was trying to play with my lip. He put a finger in my mouth. And my, my, he was young and stupid, so I forgave. But my, like he had teeth marks on his finger. There is a photo of my, me holding a glass drink going directly towards his head. And as I pushed him out away, it was like, keep your hands off me. Oh. Keep your hands off me. Actually, I said more like a chirping vocal, like, keep your hands <laughs> off me. Keep your hands off me. Like, So so here's, anyway, here's, here, here's, here's one other thing, uh, yes. too. I am 56 years old. I, 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 I do not I do not appreciate twenty two year olds calling me honey. Yeah, no, <laughs> don't do that. You know what though? Waiting tables and bartending, I will tell you, so many men loved it. So many of them. Like that's just um but honey, I got lucky sweetie. the bar the place where I was like the head bartender was a harder side of town. The Mexican mafia used to come meet oh, there okay. and everything. Um, yeah, oh yeah. I dated them I, at one time. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, and it was very cool. And like, I showed up kind of nice, and they're like, "No, we don't, we don't want you nice." So they were mean to me until I started, <laughs> till I started getting hard on them. And then it was like, "Oh, yay! Now we're all friends. Now you know how to do it." And um, so you know, I learned to like, uh, you know, be that sassy bartender who gives it right back to the customers and everything. And that ended up being my deal pretty much everywhere I went to bartend after it. Like, people, like, men would come to my section to be abused. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I it think, was nice. <laughs> I think with bartending, you're allowed a little bit more freedom, per se, than a store retail customer yeah. service environment. Now, wait, waiters, wait staff, you have to be nice, and hopefully the people aren't being big jerks. With bartending, I think... And that's why a lot of comedians and actors work as bartenders, is you need to have some personality. You need to make the situation something that people would want to enjoy being at. And um, with one of the previous bars I was heavily involved with, we really helped push a uh, Saturday afternoon and then later a Saturday evening crowd by uh, me and me and the bartender working, making the place social, making the place some place you would like to be. Yeah. Now I've had the flip side where I've had like horrible bartenders, and depending on what the establishment is, is either a you leave the bar, you only got the one bartender, or if you're in the club, like in the in the gay bar environment, it's like we can find another bartender. Someone else will take my money and make me happy, and I don't need to give you a tip. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that leaves that leaves me the one final question. Is $15 really enough? No, it's actually not. That's below living wage. Living wage in this country right now is like $22. Yeah. Um, but I don't even want us all to just be able to live. Can we just have a thriving wage and start at like $30 an hour? Can we just Can we just do that? Uh, well, well, see, the minimum wage was originally intended for teenagers that were working. No, that is not true. Oh. FDR... Uh -huh. started the minimum wage and it was intended to be a living wage because he literally said in his speech that this should ensure that no person um, is living in poverty and can't find a home or you know have the necessities of life. Able to do and that. that's what it was supposed to be. And that's he just you know they changed so the word twisted. definitions. It got twisted well, over the years. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be a living wage. It was supposed like to keep else. up with inflation and it did for a while. But, yeah. no. Well, FDR died over 70 years ago, so whatever he did, you have to understand it's been reinterpreted, misinterpreted, and here we are. Cheers! Well, yay. completely undone and stripped away by the boomers, systematically on uh, purpose. The, the big step that that happened is um, the reason the government's broke is because of Reagan. Reagan yeah. cut taxes for the rich, and we need to recognize that what the Republicans stand for which Mitch McConnell said, oh, when they take back the House in 20, November 2022, you'll find out. It's like, that's not a good agenda. No. I, I have to, 
Like, uh, they have yet uh, to have I, I will be one of those people, like, if we ever have a gathering, like, I would have to say, like, there may be gay erotic material played in my house. If Rachel coming, if Darren coming, it's like the porn playing. Like, we're going to play the hardcore stuff. Yes. If, if Rachel coming, we're going to find, like, some of the, like, PG-13, like, Just guys gone soft, wild. Softcore. Like the like the soft core skin and mats that I had growing up. I remember one was like a murder mystery. Skin-a-mats, it was pretty wow. dope. I love those movies. Like <laughs> it was really if fun. you ever want to sit through and review Cinderella nineteen seventy seven, sure. it's a musical soft core porn where the fairy godmother is played by a gay black man, the only black man in the entire uh cast, and it's a musical. I didn't tell you it's a musical. It's a snapper. And uh, the fairy godmother gives uh, Cinderella something that snap. And that's why Cinderella is... Uh, no, there is another black oh. person, but we don't know the gender of it. They just dance. No, that that like, this sounds is, great. I, I also remember, I'll watch that with you. I'll, I'll, watch, up. I'll watch it. <laughs> you know, and there's also... I remember one where um, this girl was, like, dressed up as Spider-Man. I don't remember what happened because she, like, walked around in the woods and stuff, too. Oh. Uh, and there were other people there, but yeah, she was dressed like Spider Girl. That's there's, what I there's a lot of that, those porn. Um, and see, I'm such a comic book fan. And these like, are like I almost 90s. feel like I need to correct you on uh, like Spider Girl and like Spider Woman and Spider Man. Like, I almost oh. feel like, I, I, unless there was yellow triangles, it was not Spider Woman. I know that much. Well, it wasn't <laughs> any of them because it was like an offshoot. So, but, but, but uh, uh, I mean, and this was also in the 90s. So, this was like pre reboot Spider Man as awesome. Those, those actually continued on into 2000s and 2010s. Like, there's. Uh, gay parodies of the uh, Star Wars, The Force Awakens. There's gay parodies of um, She-Hulk, a Marvel character soon to be launched on a show in, I think, Disney+. Plus. But uh, China, the wrestler, who had, did a porn movie, said, oh, I regret it, and then promptly went back to do a porn movie as She-Hulk. Like, those come out. And I've yet to see Marvel's Eternals, but I am waiting for the gay parody, The Internals. Internals, yeah. Um, so I just wanted to say to go back to the living wage real quick because oh, Corey, li- oh, Corey came we back went with the directly numbers to porn. Yeah, like if you can't live off the living wage, go to, to porn. porn. They, yeah, that works out. <laughs> but we have only the actual- fans. <laughs> oh man, don't get me started on that. Um, hold on. Oh, so uh, <laughs> the in Cook County, the living wage is technically sixteen dollars and thirty two cents. But it's just a survival wage for a single person with no children. A thriving wage would be ten to fifteen dollars over that. So you know, yeah. like I said, twenty five thirty dollars is yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what Elizabeth, Elizabeth Warren said too. Yeah, but to talk about OnlyFans, I want to go back to this OnlyFans okay. um, being stripped of people's right to adult content was a, another ploy to try to force people back into the workforce. Women, they're making money. They're not getting any more off top. They wanted to go back. They don't want people <laughs> to be thriving. Off, but keep yeah, going. they don't <laughs> want that. They so that's why they uh, tried. To, they took out the adult content on there. Well, it didn't last. They went back to it. Uh, but I, I just remember that that's why they did it. And I was so mad. I'm so glad that they went back. As, as someone who's recently began to pimp himself on Twitter, and even <laughs> though my Twitter is like from 2009, I've only used it. The most I've used it is like the past five, six months. I am amazed by how many people like want to get up every morning and like send photos out to strangers of their <laughs> naked. Like... I I won't lie, I, I hate to say I had an awakening last summer where I was on an app and you could talk to people live and it was a man wearing some low-hanging jeans and he was tearing apart a piece of furniture. furniture. He was doing construction. Ooh, know, it's construction. Sweating. He was sweating that man in his, Push that furniture. his church. So just tearing it up. Just tearing it up. And then... His prof like, and I talked to him a little bit on on the apps and everything, and there we were. And then suddenly he's like, "Oh, here's my 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 Twitter, my OnlyFans." Suddenly, Twit, I go on Twitter. It's like, "Oh, I was right to say I didn't like your shave lines." Like, I was right. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "Oh yeah, go ahead, go to the OnlyFans." Like, what more will I see from the OnlyFans? Like, you give it away for free. And also, if I ever end up in this particular city, you say you hold yourself out. I'm sorry. You rich yourself out for a massage. 
Ah. Like, why follow your only fans for ten dollar a month oh. when I could get to town and pay eighty? I wonder <laughs> is can can could potentially somebody make money receiving massages? I wonder if that's a thing. And that's it, it might be. I bet. Like, there's a lot of fetishes out there. Yeah. Like, I hate to say this. I should let. I love massages. I should let people who want to give massages give me a massage, right? For money? Yeah. <laughs> Rachel, what, what, whatever you can do, let me just say there are a lot of fetish out there. And ages, ages, ages ago, um, someone like hit me up and his whole thing was like gym socks, like socks. So I either had to wear like black dress socks or I had to wear like the white gym shorts, sh gym socks. And like, I don't make my whites the whitest. I, I stain, I, I spill too much. So I try to <laughs> avoid white clothing. Do we understand? Like, I will never be killed for wearing white shoes after Labor Day because I do not own white clothing. And so, yeah, so, so it's like, like the mildly blue jean stained white socks I have. And he would just want me to like come over and hang out. And then he like just rub my sock all over his face. Speaking of which, and I wish Thomas. him well. That is fabulous. I mean, he liked it. Yeah. I don't know what that like. I just like, okay, he liked my hoof. Yeah. Okay, why my not? dainty hoof. But speaking of uh, uh, Thomas potentially making money with feet, I <laughs> I sent you a picture of my pedicure the other day, and I'm wondering, where's my cut? Well, one, the one little pig you went to market. Okay, but I need seventy percent. Those are my feet. <laughs> I ain't pimped out your well, hoof yet. Oh. Now, speaking <laughs> about white shoes, though, we do have to talk about the Eminem controversy. Oh yes, yes. And my anger, like, I have to be honest, I did not know what size heel. The green Eminem or brown Eminem wore like I, I don't think they were spiked. I don't think they were like ballerina boots. I think they always wore the respectable heel. So like brown Eminem going to the kitchen heel. My biggest complaint is like, girl, why are you wearing brown with white shoes? You ain't the Supremes' first album, 1961, Meet the Supremes. And number two, who wears white shoes after Labor Day? That's what, that really angers me. I Mom. thought she looked super <laughs> cute. I like Mom. those. No white shoes after Labor Day. That is death. And you don't wear white shoes if you wear brown so, or black. Can I just... Okay. Oh, go ahead, Anger, Aaron. go Sorry. on, go yeah, on, Anger. So, so uh, yeah, my thing is, here's all these conservatives that say, oh, Jesus, 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 and yet we have Tucker Carlson on there who is going nuts over a green m, &M. Is there a fetish uh, there? I mean, child. can you imagine just, yeah. like, <laughs> waking up one day and no longer being attracted to your favorite cartoon? Like, <laughs> I really feel for him. That sounds... Pretty devastating. Um, <laughs> oh, Corey says, can we just call Tucker Carlson candy effort from now on? <laughs> I, I need to point out some things right now. Uh, as someone who realizes he has caught the COVID-19 as I rub my really big stomach <laughs> and I'm bloated today. Um, a grocery store close to my house closed down and everything was 50% off. So I kind of grabbed a little bit too much Heath Bar and Zero Bar and uh, Almond Joys. And yes, I know no one likes Almond Joys, but I like Almond, Almond Joys. Joys got nuts. That's why he, don't. he likes the nuts. We just and, harmonized. Um, those, those, uh, those chocolate bars are still in my, my cabinet. Not because I no longer find them attractive. It's just more like, <laughs> do I really need to eat three candy bars a day? Like, at some point, you look at those calories. And if you can't sleep at night because of an M&M, you have issues. Why do you and think the sexiest candy is, y'all? <laughs> well, if you were talking about... Hot chocolate! <laughs> oh, I look about chocolate bombs. Hot cocoa bombs. Oh, yeah. Hot cocoa bombs. That's pretty so, sexy. If, well, <laughs> if you were talking to Chevy Debbie, she would say Snickers. Snickers. It really satisfies. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> it has the, it's it's a big piece of chocolate with veins on it. So yeah. Yes, it is. Um, we'll get back to the sexy. Yeah, stuff. yeah. Think yeah, about I it. Get back to Taco what, what do y'all think the sexiest candy some, is? He made some interesting points last night that Russia is planning to apparently evade the Ukraine. Ukraine, and he's wondering why the U.S. is siding with Ukraine oh, instead geez. of Russia. And at this point, okay, we'll start off with my viewpoint of, you know what, 
I live in Chicago. I barely leave my house. Uh, living off the system. Going to get a job soon. Got some leads. Purchasing hopefully my retirement property. I will probably will never end up in the Ukraine. I've been in Austria, but that's Austria is beautiful. Austria's I call gorgeous. Vienna. I mean, Chicago is the Vienna of America. Yeah. And uh, I need to point out, like, okay, number one, like. <laughs> Should we side with the Ukraine, side with Russia? Why wouldn't we side with Russia? And so here we go. Uh, Tucker Carlson, F it. I'm in. Tell me why it's good for a large country with an angry leader and strong military to go out and conquer other countries to absorb and accumulate more mass. Please, tell me how this is a good thing. Versus, I guess, the U.S. stance of if a country wants to be independent, if we can help them to be independent. Like, just because the fat 600-pound kid can walk over to little Miss Sunshine, who hasn't had her growth spurt because she's four feet tall in the in the lunchroom, and can beat the crap out of her and take her lunch because her parents are trying to fat her up, and only happens to, to the big kid. Like, you know what? You're right. When I, when I see my neighbor take his kid out of the backyard and just beat him savagely that the kid ends up blind in one eye, I guess we have to say this is a good start. Freedom of choice to raise yes. your children. I mean, really, why, I, why would we side with Russia? Can I put on the tinfoil hat for a second? Yes, please. Um, for the past, what, uh, the last two years of Trump's presidency, uh, they were trying so hard to uh, demean Ukraine, the Ukraine yeah. that uh, they actually tried to get. Uh, yeah, I can hear it out here too. They uh, actually they, they okay, so they were to, trying to demean the Ukraine. Why do we wish to demean these people? Like this is the equivalent of oh hey, let's go ahead and let. Um, Oklahoma, Colorado, Nebraska, Missouri get together and just beat up people in Kansas. Is there a problem in beating up people in Kansas? Uh, <laughs> well, see, the thing is, they tried everything, including trying to, uh, when Glad Joe Biden, one, thank you, thank you, uh, when they were trying to, uh, when they found out that Joe Biden was running, they tried to tie his son Hunter to the Ukraine, the Ukraine investigated said no. <laughs> there's no well, ties there. But there's actually uh, impeached Trump trying to do. Yeah. There, there, there's actually that's something funny is um, as Trump there's is dealing with legal issues in New York State, New York City, the January 6th Commission, the Georgia Georgia, <laughs> Georgia Commission, uh, Michigan, Wisconsin, right Arizona. Uh, back to Georgia, Atlanta, uh, they're looking into a lot of things with Trump, and apparently, this is odd enough, I, now, if I called out and said, hey, I want to make sure Darren Marshall's husband, uh, Golden Ticket, ain't going to come home tonight, and I say this in the room, and Rachel's there, but because I feel she's my daughter, that when they subpoena Rachel to say, yeah, Thomas put a hit on Golden Ticket, they have come after my children. He is sobbing that they are coming I after know. his children. And we have to remember that the first impeachment trial, straight up, was the Ukraine, Trump not releasing the military benefit to the Ukraine, because if you want to have your own independence, I don't know if we want another country to come in and slaughter you. Oh, sorry, Kurds. Sorry, Kurds. You. you were allowed to be slaughtered. God, sorry. that breaks my heart. Oh, my uh, God, so much. And so he's screaming, oh, they're coming after my children. So why was Hunter Biden in Trump name when he called into Ukraine other than you going after someone's child? And I want to point out also that Jeff Sessions and Trump decided the best way to deal with Central America sending people to the U.S. border seeking asylum. And asylum is like we have no food. Military is trying to kill us. Hey, we need help. We can't help ourselves. We're willing to work. Hey, can you help us? And their first instinct was like, well, we'll take your children away from you and um, you won't get them back. Yeah. And so Trump doing his crocodile tear. Now, I think he loves Ivanka. I think he really, he loves her, yeah. really 
has loved Ivanka. Well, he's talked about how uh, <laughs> how much he likes her chest. How much he, they, he do her he's had her sit in his lap his and kiss her, and yeah. even now when he kisses her, his hands like on the top part of her butt, like not even like clearly on her waist, like the low part of her waist. Like it's it's gross. Uh, it's so gross. And, and, and that is one of the positives we have to realize about Trump. And I'm going to anger the FCC now because I'm making sure everyone's mad at me. Um, since the election was stolen without any proof, we can all talk about Trump raping his own daughter. And we don't need to actually provide proof because he set the rules. Well, and, I think we could actually probably make a much better case for that than a fraudulent election based yeah. on like the fact that he has raped a 13-year-old girl before. Yeah. So I think, uh, but real quick, I just want to, uh, like, to do we want to tone it back or we want to stay on this? Because I have sexy candy stuff again. <laughs> um, keep going, girl. Well, keep going. I need to take a, oh, I'm sorry. Darren, uh, it's well, your no, I, 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 just, I, just, I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, his, his whole thing with his children, and yet Junior, if you saw the last video he put out, looks so cooked up. I mean, they're all grown-ups, so, okay? We uh, don't yeah. need, we're not protecting children. He, we protect he sounded, Baron. He sounded Baron's a child. Unintelligible. He he was slurring his words. But yeah. But those I aren't saw. his children. Like those are those are like those, those are his uh, but they're not children. They're grown-ups. Yeah. And and Eric Trump's defense. <laughs> He's dumb. I had to accept this growing up that my parents love my siblings more than me. And now Eric Trump and Don Jr. I think you're talking about John Jr. I think Don, Don Jr. Jr. is yeah. the one with the coke. Eric Trump's the one who pleaded the fifth while... Uh, like 180 times 500 times in five hours. Because it's not the first time he's had a full fifth in five hours. <laughs> and um, with Donald Trump, Don Jr., and I, it's one of those you have to recognize. Like It's hard to accept that your parents love your siblings more. Sometimes they've known them longer. I've heard that one. Yeah. Like, we, we, we had the first and you were the second. I get that one. And so it's not easy to accept. And, and that's what, why he coked up. It's not an easy pill to swallow of daddy loves your sister, loves your sister more than he loves I, you. I can honestly <laughs> only imagine how abusive that environment was growing up because he grew up in a fairly abusive environment and was raised to be a bully. Like, he, like, bullied his older brother because his older brother didn't have that. Well, there are pictures there was, of John Jr. with his kids, and the kids look terrified. Well, it, there's, um, there's um, a front line from PBS um, that I watched. So, before the election, this last election, they always do one on the, on the candidates. So, they did one on Biden and one on Trump. And the one on Trump is incredibly telling. There was a lot of things I didn't know about. So, if you get a chance, you should definitely go... And check out, you know, no. PBS about the candidates is what it was. No, no, I'm just going to throw this in because I think it will lead to a good conversation starter. Does moral character actually matter? What qualifies as moral character? And where are we now? I mean, we all knew Trump was bad. We all knew he did illegal things. And arguably running for president, becoming president, brought to mind to everybody of like, you know, he did a lot of illegal things. Um, I, I'll use myself as an example as someone who worked in a sex shop. I'm a Tracy Lords fan. Um, I bought <laughs> things off the rack. Like if you really want to dig through my my magazines, you might find a picture of Brent Corrigan, who actually did porn before he was of legal age. Or God, this is almost sad. Like Brandon Lee did porn before they were of legal age, but they continued doing porn throughout their adulthood also. And so it's one of those, like, someone sneaks through my house and you're going through a fine-tooth comb and suddenly it's like, oh, Thomas has a publicity photo of Tracy Lords and she was, she was going to turn 18 in three days, but here she is in a see-through swimsuit. Thomas, you're a pornographer and you're a pedophile. And the answer is like, no, I'm not. I just happened to own something that later on got changed. No, this is full on like, y'all did some dirty stuff. Yeah. Real dirty stuff. And, and when they're like, oh, it's a, a 65 floor building. Well, it's actually a 55 floor building. This is downtown New York City. So oh, are we going to talk about the? Are you going to talk about the apartment fraud? <laughs> the apartment fraud. I mean, there's a lot of stuff where he. 
buy those 10 floors and how many units are on those floors and suddenly you have increased your value by 40 million yeah 60 yeah. million you, 80 million like it go up do, do you want to uh talk about how um the fraudulent uh, like how trump like listed his place at like 300 yeah. percent or whatever yeah you yeah wanna... because because that's the thing can you tell us about it really? that, that, that's going on uh he well it, it was one of his uh properties actually now if they added another property to the list oh uh, the doral in florida has been added to the list but the one we, they were looking at was his actual home in manhattan right Is no, that, I, no. It, it was one in i think upstate new york oh okay yeah it was one in upstate New York. Uh, it, it, what he listed it as on his taxes and what it was actually worth were two different things. And he... Well, that's illegal, isn't it? Is I that illegal? So. I don't own real, real estate. <laughs> Is that illegal? Yeah, especially for insurance purposes. It's definitely insurance oh, okay. fraud. All right. Yeah. Keep going. So, uh, <laughs> so you, you're, you're multiplying that by... Uh, the diff because this is just one, and it went from just the one to now. I think it's like up to four properties that he's done this with. Oh, Only I'm the sure. Four. It's, I'm sure it's all of them. Only all the of four. Them. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, there, there is one uh, another investigation that we don't talk about much in the U.S. because it's not happening in the U.S. Keep going. In Scotland. His oh, property yeah. in Scotland. Oh, they've been trying to get him out of there forever. Yeah. But I just thought it was really funny because, so it wasn't just overinflated. So, um, for one thing, it was like a 10,000 square foot apartment and he listed it as like 30,000 square feet. Oh. And yeah. it was like, um, maybe a million dollar apartment. I don't remember. Maybe not even that much. And then they listed it as like four million dollars. When meanwhile, the most expensive apartment in the country at the time was 1.92. He, so he, oh yeah, it was 300, he over guessed like two or three million. <laughs> like, you, uh, his guess was he's, wronger he's, than the most expensive apartment he, already. He raises the value of his property so he can then borrow money. Is that correct? Borrow money, mm -hmm. when, get money against said property. That it doesn't actually exist. That's not the correct property. And then when he's having to pay his taxes, he then lowers the value of the property to such an insane amount. And we need to recognize that he paid seven hundred and fifty dollars in federal uh, taxes yeah. because he had such a loss. And now I... you can do that as an independent contractor. You can do that. As an independent person, as someone like Darren who runs this radio show, Rachel Bloomstorm, you have the radio show in the Quarantine Queens. Um, I have my own radio show. I, I can probably do some other stuff. You do write that stuff off. But we have to ask, like, how much did you write stuff off? What was the stuff you wrote off? And why aren't you paying a what seems, if you're a billionaire, only seven hundred and fifty dollars in taxes. A and has that man ever actually had a billion all at once in no. any given moment? Because I don't know. think so. We I don't think know. like don't they think he uh, like peaked at like five hundred well, million maybe? Well, here here's here's the thing with Trump. Uh, as someone who lived in New Jersey, uh, I can tell you, and a bunch of people from New Jersey, New York, Delaware, Maryland, uh, Pennsylvania can tell you. Uh, this kind of behavior has been going on since the 70s with him. There's oh, always yeah. use and abuse of the system, and I a mean, lot of people do use and abuse the system. I Sorry. think people forget about his dad. Like, he learned it from watching him. Yes. <laughs> like, I learned it from you! He learned it from watching his dad, y'all. So. <laughs> so, so that's one of the reasons why New York hates him because they know all the BS. Everything from the uh, congressional mafia trials back in the, I think, 80s, uh, where and he literally operated with the mafia. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> His name came up so many times See. in that trial. Uh, you know, um, they they were talking about how he would have code words. Uh, he talked to them in code so that if he needed something to happen to one of the tenants <laughs> of one of his buildings. <laughs> They could get it done. For yeah, them. It's, it's true. It's true. This is true. Donald Trump used the mafia in order to 
handle tenants okay. that he wanted handled. I I need to to emphasize like the the oh handle my tenants. It's one of those. It's like old school. Like I, I'm ghetto trash. I own it. I ain't and so no white trash. Uh, a friend of mine recently, he was like 40s thick. Like, he's like, oh, I've been missing crackers. I'm like, you know, they call white people. But <laughs> anyway, I remember one time hearing a story growing up. I was in Des Moines, Iowa, before there was a West Des Moines. But we were known for the kidnapping capital. That was Des Moines, oh. Iowa. And uh, I didn't live in Des Moines. I've never lived in Iowa, but I've, I've, I've spent a couple nights there. They had one of those old school water beds that you actually filled I with water. I had one growing yes. up. Yes. I and, did. And we put like a, a, a sled without the, the one of the flat bottom sleds. And I knew not to put the spikes on the damn bed. So we put the flat bottom sled on the water bed. And then we climbed on the flat bottom sled. So we were like riding a boat oh, <laughs> to the water bed. That's anyway. Cute. That's funny. This is one of those, like, they talked about some relative, and, like, the kids were so bad, they get into fights, and then there would be, like, dents in the hall, and dents in the wall, and I laughed. And someone talked about a cousin that was so bad that, like, they'd be walking down the hallway, eating a hot dog, and just kind of be done with the hot dog, so you just drop it on the floor. And I laugh no, at that because... Texas. That's just a level of absurdity trash that at some point you're like, you know what? Don't put this in my wall. Don't put this on my wall. Don't leave food <laughs> on the floor. Like, and these people and do exist. And put your card back. These people do exist. As someone who's had to rely on others for uh, cat sitting, um, like we had one cat sitter that liked him and it was fine. And the futon in the, in the bedroom turned into a, a bed. And I knew every time we would come home, like the first four hours would be like, I don't know why he didn't throw away the delivery Mexican bag. I don't know why he, ooh, we've just found all this stuff on the floor. Like you Can would you just imagine have to what clean their up. place looks like? I saw their place one time and it was like just a whole pile of trash. And I, let me emphasize, like I am ashamed. I feel ashamed because I have a trash can in my sunroom my kitchen, my office, my bedroom, the bathroom, the living room, the desk work area. But I have failed myself as a person because I do not have the trash can in the actual dining room. And I should probably have a trash can. No. Are you realizing like no, you, know, you can walk, walk to the, the other room, like yeah. you, you have a you have enough trash cans. Yes. This man could not find trash. Like he would like come over and I would just like put two trash cans right there by, by where he would go <laughs> just sleep. Just hand him a plastic bag when he comes in, like just carry this with you. Just ne put your trash Never made it to the trash can. Never, never made it to the trash like, can. Like I'm a pretty messy person, but Ooh. not with trash. I could pick that up. <laughs> Bye. Uh, but going back to Trump, I was oh, yeah. actually living. Sorry. Trump. <laughs> I was actually living in Atlantic City when the whole Trump Taj Mahal thing went down. Oh yeah, how do you lose money on a casino? casino. Thank oh, you. Oh right. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to be me looking again at you, Rachel. But if we decided to do like the host crusade of comedy, and like you, you, you flash your, your goods on top, and I move the audience, and we charge fifty dollar a ticket. <laughs> Knowing that we just have to do a comedy set and you flash the goods and I mood everybody. Even if we get one customer, we made money. Like some idiots, <laughs> like, they showed up. Like, cause, like, I don't get gambling because I work too hard for my money. I used to, to gamble for a living. Me. Okay. I really did. If you can make that work, it's good. Yeah, and I'd love to learn how it. to play blackjack next uh, time well, before I go to Las I also Vegas. I played pool, try. which is a skill okay. game as well. But it I'll is. Tell you about like, that. If you know how to profit off it, yeah, yes. Yeah. But as casinos, you deal with a dumb mass public the, who just like throw money yeah, at you. There is no way to not make money as yes. a casino, I guess. Well, here's, here's the other thing about Trump and his finances. Uh, Deutsche Bank. There's a lot of stuff going on at Deutsche Bank that we probably don't know about. First of all, the the person that was handling his accounts happened to be the son of a, a Supreme Court uh, justice that suddenly quit after Trump had... Uh, there's a lot of dirty dealing, and there's a lot of yeah. dealing, dealing that's going on. You know, I would Supreme love it Court. if they just unraveled all of Trump's ties worldwide so we could start unraveling each of these people who have been in contact with him. Because yeah. they are all criminals. Yeah. And, 
They're all of them. And it ties into other things, unfortunately, like the current issue with Ukraine. Oh, I'm sorry. In 2019, didn't we talk a lot about Ukraine and how Ukraine can't protect itself because it needs the U.S. military because it's trying to find its own independence? And we all talked about that. And now Trump, who, don't forget, fell in love with Putin, who met with Putin to discuss things that he did not share with the U.S. populace, who... After firing Comey from the FBI, then bragged to Russia about firing the head of the FBI, and then told top secret information to a Russian provider that is in um, Scotland, or does he have one in Ireland? Because Russia is now breathing down the border of the Ukraine and circling Ireland. So what is going on? What information did Russia learn? Now, now this is the equivalent of Rachel's told me her home address. You both know my home address. I'm cool with you guys knowing my home address. Do I need to explain why psycho stalker bad comedian does not need to know my home address, yeah. especially if he wants to be on my radio show and he plans to show up at my door and knock. Do we need to explain why he don't need to know where I live? Yes. Like, <laughs> I need to hear this. I need to hear this story. But that's for my own personal nosy reasons. <laughs> that's oddly one of the, the things that's happened sometimes with dealing with comedians. Like, I like Darren. Darren's been in my house. Rachel will get you in my house at some point. Uh, one of my apartments, Darren was uh, the first guest we ever had off ah. the, of Drake and Lawrence because we did some show and we were heading back and I... Yeah. And, and um, I was like, hey, you want to see the new place? I'm dropping off Grumpy Cat. Literally, I bought the stuffed animal Grumpy Cat. And so that was the first decoration of the Aww. house. And Darren was there with me when yeah. we put it in the house. And he really liked the apartment. He didn't like the four flights of stairs up to the third floor walk up. But the apartment itself was fabulous. Oh, yeah. um, keeps you honest. Gives you exercise. Now, um, Yeah, I got it too. But there have been other comedians where I'm like, um, I'll meet you at X and X Corner, which is like two or four blocks from my house, because you don't need to know where I live. I really and... should. I really should protect myself more than I do. <laughs> I'm afraid everybody knows right where to walk. But like, also everybody in my neighborhood like sees each other coming in and out of their home. Yeah. So no. So so do, do you think Trump sold information to Russia? Oh, yeah. Do you oh, yeah. think he babbled? Do you think all oh, that yeah. stuff? And um. I guess we're at 5 o'clock, so we'll restart, because I want to talk about some other stuff. We fluffed all, all, all our first hour, Darren. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we, it was a lot of fluff. It was. Because well, I just didn't want to go back about, and... I just want to yeah, mention, let's, though, let's I, did I, figure, <laughs> I did figure out what I think the sexiest candy is. And Corey... Oh, sexiest candy. Yeah, Corey said he thinks red vines are. And I've decided that I think oh, candy canes... Candy canes are the sexiest candy. Candy canes? Yeah. Those are the That's only if you want to get anal play and make it taste minty. Like you don't want candy cane. What kind no, of? No, <laughs> you don't use it. No, oh. no. It, it, like <laughs> we were talking about sexy oh, candy earlier. Like how <laughs> sexy M Ms are. I'm just saying. I think candy cane's sexy. Do you, Look do you at those curves. M Ms <laughs> melt in your mouth, not in the hair. <laughs> do they melt in the hair? <laughs> Yeah, you you know, or maybe a lollipop. A, maybe you just suck on this for a little while. A VHS. That's a pretty. That's a pretty sexy candy. Speaking yeah. about candy canes and the pepper, peppermint taste. Yeah. There's this really obscure, uh, but really fun um, gay porn in 1996 that has it has a couple musical numbers in it too, um, called Mardi Gras Cowboy, and there's actually an emotional connection to the candy cane. Candy cane peppermint. So there were peppermint candies, and they were in the wrapper, and and said candy and wrapper would disappear into some place, but then the candy would come out without the wrapper. <laughs> and that's some skill. <laughs> All right. She'll be okay. Uh, anyway, right. uh, Mardi Gras cowboy, Vin Kid Timo, check it out. Um, are we going into our five o'clock hour? Is there an announcement? I don't. Uh, yeah, there, there's not. Okay. Yeah, there, Can we talk uh, about yeah, the well, fraudulent, fraudulent, well, fraudulent electoral actually, you college know what? I did want to. Can actually, I just I take a to, second okay. to go ahead and mention my show? Yeah. Yes, I, haven't, I haven't had a chance to mention it. So I am Rachel Bloomstrom. I am the 
uh, founder and co-artistic director of the Quarantine Queens Theater Company. Uh, you can find us on Facebook next Saturday at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. We will be doing our version of Twelfth Night by Shakespeare. I am playing Sir Andrew. If you're familiar with the play, I'm definitely drawing off of like an old veteran bro kind of vibe um, for this character. And I also wrote the melodies um, for the songs that are going to be in it. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's very funny. It's very funny. Um, you know, there's a lot of gender bending in it, even like historically, um, because one of the main characters is um, a, a trans. Um, so yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. This is definitely a show to check out. Played by all women plus cast. Um, yeah, that's what I wanted cool. to toss out. Yeah, and keep you. your ears open. We have Black History Month coming, and then Henry oh, yes. VIII will be in March. So, oh, yeah. And what's the theme of Henry VIII and Twelfth Night? Because you also did Macbeth. Um, well, um, <clears throat> there's there's not one specifically for these. But that's that's a thing I do when I'm directing. Um, but they're a bit more um, traditional to Shakespeare. So you know, they're just kind of well. Twelfth Night set in modern day, but you know, there's no like theme or anything. And then Henry VIII is like, I guess the thing is, there's no bad people. I guess is definitely something you know we're not trying to we're not trying to like paint people out to be like the worst people or anything. So there's no villains in that. If that's yeah. now Henry VIII is based off of uh, Queen Elizabeth the First, mother uh, Bloody Mary, Mary. Um, right, that's Henry VIII, the man who had seven wives. Yes. And how many I'm did he Henry behead? Henry VIII, I am. Henry VIII, I am. I am. I got married to the winner next door. She, she been married, married seven, seven times before, before. and everyone, everyone was a Henry. 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 Henry, you <laughs> okay, actually make my vocals sound better. <laughs> Thank you. Like I'm like, oh, I got those vocals, and then I start singing with you. It's like, oh, you're oh, regular you, Donnie and I Maurice. Do try to, I do try to harmonize. You, you, you sweeten, sweeten me a little bit. I try. That's, I try. I, I approve of harmonizing because as a, <laughs> a lifelong Diana Ross fan, I have to say like. Oh, well, Aretha has the vocals, and Tina's a force, and Whitney had beautiful voice. Like, what could Diana do? It's like, well, number one, she could harmonize. Like, she could That's harmonize with anybody, yeah. including the audience. Like, she didn't have to overpower you. She harmonizes with That's you. A, That's an amazing and, talent. Uh, a lot of powerful singers can't do it. No, they can't. It's... <laughs> So. And uh, Miss Ross could also keep the beat. Uh, I, I'm reminded of this because I'm thankful. Uh, a friend recently gave me some late, some 90s uh, maxi singles. So it was Whitney Houston's My Love Is Your Love. And, and I like that one. And um, it was uh, Gloria Estefan's Turn the Beat Around, where it becomes more of percussion Miami sound machine yeah. on the remixes. And I really like that one. And then it was Christina Aguilera's like, What a girl wants? What a girl needs, and I'm like, whatever I, I, makes it happy, set you free, and I'm begging you to sing something like that. I don't know. Yeah, it's something been a while. like that. <laughs> like you, you sing it better than she does, because like Christina <laughs> cannot hit the beat to save her life. What like I, that, I never liked that song, but I always used to do the really bad example of like Aaliyah's "Try Again" versus Christina Aguilera's "Dirty," and who can hit the beat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know who can hit the beat that we forgot about? Brandy. Oh. Yeah. Well, we tried to watch her show, and apparently it got Queens, was it, yeah. Darren? I I watched the first episode, and then I got into the second, and it felt like, God, I... Are you talking I, about the show from the 90s? No, no. no there was something recently launched show. with um, uh, Brandy and Eve. The former uh, rapper Eve, where Brandy is the bad girl and Eve's the good girl. All right. And they were part of a girl group and they were making their comeback, which is a great premise for a show. Don't get me wrong. I just, I, I was reminded of Commander and Queef, I mean Commander in Chief, where <laughs> Gina uh, Davis became president, but then there was all these scenes of her cooking breakfast for her husband and just complaining about their marriage. And it's like, what? 
Like, I don't want to be mean, but I don't think the uh, female president would spend time. Like, there would yeah. be, like, that would be like a, a, a half season thing where the husband feels he's been left behind because she president. Not, oh, baby, why won't you pay attention to me while I make you breakfast? It's like. That's not I even Gina Davis. That... <laughs> Who directed that? What is that? Is that so, say something? Um, that was Commander in Chief, which yes. was a Gina Davis yeah. show. They may or may not have done a Sigourney Weaver show where she was also a, a president. But the female president shows don't last very long. And oddly enough, Commander in Chief actually had a fairly successful first season. They just chose not to renew it. Um, also happened to uh, Jane Lynch with the Good Angel, Angel show that even though it got good ratings and they didn't promote it very much, they canceled it after like six episodes and left episodes, because I know someone who was going to be in them, uh, left episodes unaired because they just chose to cancel it. Wow. Because, you know, why have competent women <laughs> in charge to be on TV? We can't have that. Now, now, Rachel, do you feel lost when you're not in the kitchen? <laughs> uh... No. No, I am. Uh, but I do like to cook, actually. I'm a pretty good cook. And I used to do a show like Night Cooking. Um, but I feel like uh, I interrupted Darren. Darren, did you toss it back to you? or No, I, I was just looking at something. Uh, uh, we were talking on our way here about Joe Biden's uh, hot oh, mic. Oh, he had his oh, hot mic. Oh, the hot mic. Yeah, where he called uh, Peter Ducey, who is the whipping boy for Jen Psaki at every... Uh, press conference. He's on Fox Fox News. <laughs> so what? News? What was I, the I question, just, and what did Biden say? Uh, it, the question had something to do with uh, whether he thinks the inflation will actually help America, and Biden <laughs> and Biden was like, "That's a stupid question. That's that's yeah yeah higher inflation. What a stupid sob." And uh, representative Rep representative Jim Banks. A Republican. Oh, Have we ever seen a president attack and malign the free press like Joe Biden has? And, oh, and, yeah. And, Let's go Trump. Let's and, go Trump. And, and Adam Kinzinger said, gotta be a parody, right? Please, God, let this be a parody. <laughs> no, was like, and, Trump was and, attacking the... I'm oh, sorry. Oh, and I was going to say, didn't somebody um, New York, New York come Times out? Yeah, they listed... Listed every single person. I, I started to do that on Twitter where I was like, are you serious? And then I, I was like, Pelosi, Ted Cruz, uh, even, yeah, Fake even, news. You know, yeah. Oh, oh, that's, that's right. When Trump was complaining about people attacking children and his children, like, Theta Grunberg, right? Yeah, Greta Thunberg, yeah. Greta Thunberg, Thunberg she's like, one. she's underage, talked about climate change. All you did was run her through the mud. It's like, you know yeah. she's underage. Like, do you really? Yeah, she was like 15 when he started bullying there was, her. There was a there was a a man with the press. I think his last name was Grosinger or something like that. And he yes. had a disability. And Trump was on there. Yeah. Doing the whole oh, yeah. Well, yeah. don't forget the time that uh, U.S. Jur journalist got killed by was it the Saudi Arabia yeah. royal family? And Trump's like, eh, it's okay. They give us cheap oil prices. Do you like, know what those guys are doing now? Those guys are living in a mansion. They are yeah. living it up. And I think it's Palm well, Springs was no is where they found them. There were no consequences. There's yeah, no those punishment. Guys who, yeah, those no... guys who killed them. And I think they're like, they're being put up in a mansion. I don't remember by whom. I don't want to say it wrong. But I think it was either Trump or they were using state money. Now, Rachel, I have to be honest. And we're going to call you out. If I can sell you to Saudi Arabia for $5 million, I would learn to retire and buy girl. Now, <laughs> how do you, now, how much money would you sell me out for? Well, now or before you do that. <laughs> we ain't that close. No. Just like, <laughs> no, it's just one of those like, well. I don't know. I, I honestly like thinking about the cons. Well, you're a guy. You would do better there than I would. Pass around Patty. I mean, you. I'll be do offering that Detroit double dip. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, you would have a good time. What are you talking about? <laughs> I can't lie. I do find the Middle Eastern men very, very attractive, especially if they're like overgrown and hairy. Oh my God! Speaking about sexy men, how is the Olympian from Tonga doing? 
Oh, I don't do know. know? I'm, I'm hoping he shows up for the... That's winter. another foot fetish thing, w- by the winter way. Winter Olympics. What? Uh, okay. <laughs> it all started in uh, the Summer Olympics two... Li- oh, Summer Olympics ago? Three Summer Olympics ago? Uh, Tonga, which is, has a very small uh, group of athletes, came in and they all got dressed in... Well... The, the traditional he, tribal Tribal dancing. gear... And the guy who was carrying the flag for Tonga was all oiled up, mm-hmm. mat, nice chest, yeah. wearing a grass skirt, and yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Honey, he gave the vapors. He can give. And he, he got give. over. He became an overnight sensation. Well, the Winter Olympics came around. Tonga had a a, a group of Winter Olympians. And he came out wearing the same same outfit. Same up. Out, well, what what there is of an outfit? Yeah, nice. And, and, <laughs> yeah. And he was greased up so much, honey. You couldn't even tell he was cold. Maybe. Oh no, those those nips were perky, honey. They put him under <laughs> a lighter before he walked out, honey. He could set my fire. I uh, oh. I went to Tahiti uh, when I was in the Navy, and it, we were only the second ship to go there in like twenty years. Oh, wow. And so, yeah, it was kind of a big deal. Like, you know, government had a welcoming party for us coming in. And we had some traditional Polynesian dancers meet us. Ooh. And I was one of the people sent on the ship to go down and dance with them. And um, let me show you the picture of this Polynesian prince I danced with. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, his, his name? He was so handsome and he was so nice. He was so nice. His uh. name is Peter Tofa Tofua. Tafa Tofua. I'll just yeah. call him Daddy. I, I will send you a picture, <laughs> Rachel. Okay, but, thank you. Yeah, that's the kind of guy I am. I appreciate it. Uh, I, I, you know, he looks nothing like Golden Ticket or or Mikey Chip. I have me, to point yeah, that yeah. out. Like he doesn't now, look now, like any he, of us. He might run on your you know sliding what? scale of like I get my one sheet. Like, <laughs> but, like you know what though? The thing is, like he probably wouldn't like me. I don't understand. Like, uh, like, like, uh. Like Asian and Pacific Islander, and I don't think they find me attractive. I think I'm too. I'll send this one to you too. Too really? something, I, yeah. I, I, you know, like, like is there a smell? Like, girl, you might love it. Like, what's she doing wrong? I don't wrong? know. Like, I'm. Tra- I you just, five two. You sure that they maybe, maybe they like that? I'm. I'm maybe because I'm. I'm. I'm a lot. Do you feel your butt too big? Too, uh, maybe. Uh, is your butt too big? Like, maybe. is it too, too much butt for their head? Like, like, when I was younger, like, not even white guys were interested in me. My butt was too big. <laughs> I started very as, young. As Darren Marshall and that found out you had to go, like, to the different neighborhood and then be appreciated. <laughs> oh, so. no. Oh, no, no, no. No, I, I no, my school is very mixed. And, okay. uh, I, like, I, my first boyfriend right. was black. And, okay. um, like, most of the, yeah, most of the men I dated have ended up being Mexican or black, honestly. I, I ended up in Parker Junior High, 99% white. Myself and another friend, we had the biggest butts in school. And I'm not joking. Like, we really did have, yes, like, me we, too. we were, like, I was a gymnast was, like, and a speed <laughs> skater and a soccer player. Like, I had a, Giant ass. It was muscular. Oh, oh it was a good one. And all the crackers missed out. They oh, you gonna, know what though? They like, dunk their soup. I, I I say that, but like once I graduated high school, then it was like nonstop white guys, you know, because oh, okay, because you know, uh, date rape drugs or something. I don't know. <laughs> Goodness. So, so Biden had a hot mic. He was asked a stupid question. And, and we have to recognize in a lot of these stupid questions. Um, and next came up with like Ted Cruz, where they were investigating the January 6th correlation and whatever, insurrection. And they could find someone who was there. Yeah. And they could find them by their name. But this person was outside. And so suddenly there's this conspiracy that this person's mm. actually an FBI agent. And so they asked the head of the FBI, is this person an FBI agent? It was rollerblades. And they say, no, I can't answer. And the reason it, they, they plead the fifth or whatever is because if they say no, then the person's not an FBI agent. But if they say yes, then the person is an FBI agent. And then they acknowledge anything about that person, then they have revealed something about the person. When in all honesty, the person probably was investigated. They didn't find anything. And, and and then they moved on in the investigation, which happened sometimes. Um, one time when I was uh, working in a manufacturing facility, like uh, Secret Service straight up showed up to talk to somebody 
because her child had called or did some statement angry about George W. Bush. And as they're talking to her, she eventually learned enough of her English because she wasn't from this country. Uh, she, I think she was a legal immigrant. And she basically said, you're speaking English too fast and I can't understand you. And that's why I'm responding the way I am. Um, so people get cleared of things. I, uh, yeah. And, and, and they were trying to make a show of, of this. Now with the <laughs> January 6th has sent out a lot of subpoenas and I don't know how we want to go with that. But the thing that caught my mind was the fraudulent electoral college yes. votes where someone counted votes and submitted fake material and then Pence like, won't count he, them? Yeah, he well, he wouldn't accept. They were they were wanting to steal actual ballots and yeah. uh, our ballot boxes and like do something. I don't I don't know the super well, details, but I do know that Mike Pence refused. And then the other thing too was there were uh, there were there's these forms that when you're uh, one of the electors from the electoral college. You have to uh, sign your name to verify that you vote that your state went to Joe Biden, Donald Trump, whatever. Yeah. And what happened was there were these uh, there were these forms that were sent to the National Archives that turned up to be uh, fraudulent. <laughs> uh, four of the seven were actually written on. A, a word for word verbatim, as opposed to uh, you know how it they they used the same template, template for five, six, seven different states and without then, realizing states have their own templates. Yeah, and then the uh, other the other three uh, used their own templates, but it was still um, these people were not the actual electors. Yes, from that, the that's some Republican Can, um, and some is, is a representative, so just Republicans in general, person who submitted these fraudulent forms electors. said, "I am." These well, electors. no, it was it was but, Republican yeah. Republicans from the states, uh, Republican national the, their own House or Senate committees. is yeah. what you're saying. Okay. Can you imagine like? cheating so hard you like prepare six months to cheat you get like a whole bunch of people in on it and then it comes time for the test and you still fail like oh, why didn't you just study and do better i forgot which state it was but this this actually happened i forgot which state it was but in one of the states um they tried to hand off the fake electoral votes to the person in charge but the person in charge was in another room actually doing the real electoral, and they got caught he, he, doing that. Yeah, people are trying to, to get into stuff. When I when I was in high school, um, hindsight's twenty twenty, and I accept whatever role I played, there was a level of the theater, um, not drama. She she looked down on drama, but there was the theater department. And not then, me. And then there was the, the teacher had the upper tier theater department, which would have the likes of like Shelly Hack and stuff like that. No, it was the upper tier theater department and you had to audition and then she would choose who would get through. Well, apparently some students learned how to fake the teacher's signature. And so they would, as you would submit to some of the stuff, they would just fake her name and then submit it. And I don't think those students ever faced any consequences. <laughs> but it was one of those things like, wouldn't the teacher remember who she let in? Um, I talk too fast. And I don't know. Have you met some was, teachers? Some of them that's just true. don't care. That's true. Yeah. So so maybe this is what it is. It's like, well, I, I thought I could get away this time. Maybe I'll get away next time. I, yeah. hey, and I that is something we have to, I hate to be this person. Mike no, Pence said, don't. no, I'm not going to recognize the fraudulent. I'm going to do my part. We are supposed to have a piece of peaceful transfer of power. You know who talked them into that? As they are screaming no. What will happen when we have people in power who said, you know what? I want another four years of Trump. Yeah. Let's I, accept the fraud. You, wait, you know who talked 
Ooh. pants Ooh. into doing the right Ooh. thing that day? Ooh. Dan Quayle. That sounds right. Dan Quayle actually. Come through, Dan Quayle. Who's your stick together? Yeah. Uh, who's your stick together? Well, we, we've forgotten that the, the big part is we're supposed to have a peaceful transfer yeah, of that was power. The other thing too. That has been thrown out. Um, we're supposed to. <laughs> there's a lot of things that Trump's or, and the GOP were supposed to do, and they didn't. Like, if you lose the election, I, I will openly agree. I think Hillary called it a little bit too quickly. But when you lose the election, you're supposed to politely step down. This person's the winner. Bye, y'all. I'm going to leave the stage. And instead, he said, well, I want uh, something has to obviously be wrong. I should have won. I don't know why I didn't win. And now we're going to fight the electors. Um, something I saw recently is apparently people involved in the elections are now asking for security because their names have been released. Yes. Their addresses have been released. And they are being harassed by Trump's people. And so we're That's dealing with... That's terrorism, by the way. Because it is t terrorizing people for the purpose of a political agenda and gain. That's literally terrorism. Textbook. And can I just remind people out there that when <laughs> Al Gore lost... He didn't actually lose, but because of the whole uh, having chats Florida and everything, woman, yes. the Florida thing, uh, he conceded, even though he said, you know, he didn't lose. Yeah. And Hillary Clinton, like Al Gore, won the popular vote, but lost the Electoral College. And now that we know who these people are, I guess we can terrorize them. I don't know. Um <laughs> I, I probably got banned on Facebook before coming here because I did my in 2020 <laughs> and I wrote this in 2020 uh, January 2020 is that no matter how the impeachment trial comes out please remember you can rely on your second uh, amendment rights and make your voices known little did I know a year later well apparently they did make their voices known and I I wish I, I could find some Trump supporter that seemed intelligent or seemed like someone worth walk, talking to. But really, what is it that you're missing from the past four years? Like, what happened that made you feel good? And I'm glad, I'm glad Biden's Build Back Better Republicans, uh, filibuster, whatever. I'm glad nothing's going to be done to fix the problem. And I look forward to the next year where you will lower taxes for the rich and as people total their cars by hitting potholes and mama got go sell it on the street as her kids starve. And I really hope when you start fighting more babies in the dumpster, I'm glad you repealed Roe versus Wade. I hope you're glad with your accomplishments. Yeah. And as, as, as people keep hitting potholes, as bridges don't get built, as people starve, I say good job Republicans. You know, I don't know what you stand for, but you like to stand on corpses. Cheers. Yeah. You know, uh, you, you mentioned like you don't know necessarily uh, like a smart Trump supporter. Like, <laughs> the only thing is like the only smart Republicans and Trump supporters are white supremacist and evil people. They, yeah. they are literally the worst people in this country. They actively like... You know, saying, th this is the biggest difference between the left and the right. The left uh, basically wants everybody to have equality and everyone to have money and everyone to be in a home and everybody to do better. Literally, for everybody to do good enough. Whereas the right only wants some people to do good. And if they are not oppressing people and keeping others down, they aren't happy. So it's literally true. They do enjoy sitting on a pile of corpses because they have these, like, murder boners that... You know, oh, I survive. Survival of the fittest. These people are weaker than me. Like, well, and it's not their electorate, even... is, their electorate isn't surviving COVID. Right? No, they're not. But that's, that's how it keeps it going. And so the people in charge who are like, yeah, do that. They are doing that to their own people. Yeah. Like, it's, it, it's evil. What's, I, what's sad about the Republicans and, and Mitch McConnell's sometimes lovely nickname Moscow Mitch is... It's about winning. It's about our agenda. It's about whatever their agenda is. We don't have them. But it's about winning and your ideas are wrong. 
It's. I want to point out, like, the filibuster was never an issue when Trump was president. Yeah. Because uh, Republicans were in charge and were going to steamroll you. Suddenly, re- Democrats get into power and suddenly, oh, we have to obey the rules. They have to, really? What were the rules? Didn't they just steamroll us? Isn't this how it happened? And, and, they, and, and Mitch McConnell says it's a tradition. No, it's recent. Yeah. It's recent. And, yeah. and not to mention, it's ableist. It yeah. is very ableist. Uh, if the Republicans take over in, in November, what's going to happen is the filibuster will be gone, at least for the next four years. They'll probably do a vote to, to get rid of it for the next two to four years. Well, and you know, and they don't care. They have people like Trump supporters running against local Republicans, even if they are the incumbents, because they don't feel like enough of these people are, are loyal enough. So they're actually already gearing up to run against local Republicans who are not yeah. extreme enough. And, and I have to say, listen to, to to Republicans, and, and I need to, once I start going into open mics, I'm pretty sure that when I show up with my ex lax brownies, I will have destroyed the competition. <laughs> remember, remember, <laughs> and then I will win. If you're the last one, like, if someone gets in your way, step on them. If you're the last one standing, they hire you. Hey, and you can live your life that way, but it's, Horrible. well, here we are. Remember Dramatic. remember that, that last open mic that I used to host? Uh, what was it? On, um, uh... Morris? No. no. No, it was after that. It was, what was it, Blue Line Tap, or... I don't, I don't, no. There was the one off of Armitage, Fullerton? No, no, it was, um. Standing on your soapbox? No. I don't know, I was just gonna. Anyway, get to the point, get to the point, location doesn't matter. Uh, That was, that was the last one that I hosted, and apparently they decided not to have the show there anymore, and apparently it was because we were doing too many Trump jokes. Oh. Cheers. Why are, no, this is Chicago. Everybody should be hearing it. Like, yeah. I saw one person wearing a MAGA hat one time, and I was like, how are you not dead? Why are <laughs> you in this city? But speaking of which, you know, talking about, like, this, like, st- straight, slow train crash that is going to be very, God very bad. Like, uh, you know, even a, to the side of climate change. I just want to bring it back to me putting into the universe that I am, um, you know, I'm a disabled veteran and an artist, and I do the very best I can, but I think what I really need in life is a home, and the home that I want is to be a catamaran on the water, and I don't <laughs> think I'm asking for too much. So, you know, the, with the wealth of this country, I should be able to have a home. I just want it on the water because that's who I am. So if you know anybody who has like a million dollar catamaran that they want to sell for pennies on the dollar or donate to a good cause, I think I could count myself as a nonprofit if speaking, I'm not profitable, speaking right? Speaking of veterans, speaking of veterans, uh, somebody could write that off in taxes, there though, were, right? Yeah, I think there, so. There, there yeah, were, donate to me. There were a couple of veter- vets bills that came out that. Um, Republicans voted no on the. Uh, let me tell you right now, I've got yes. torts in with the VA. Um, I have I, I have official complaints. I have malpractice complaints in right now. That place under Trump was stripped of literally everything Obama did for us. Every, like you don't get to be seen in under thirty days. You can't go out to community care if they have the availability to treat you in the clinic, even if they can't do it for three months. You can't do anything. They have one doctor per most departments. Everyone's overworked. All of their beds are full um, and they're understaffed and everybody's on edge. So like every time you have a conversation with somebody, if anybody accidentally uses a little bit of attitude, now they're arguing. Like it is a nightmare to go there. But like I, I seriously, I have a, I have a malpractice suit in for a substantial amount of money. I doubt I'm going to win the substantial amount, but I do know they're already looking at settlement. So oh, okay. I'm winning. I am winning one of those cases. That's how bad this crap is. So thank you. So so here's here's Go the thing. Here, here's the thing with uh, this. Uh, the GOP have been voting against a lot of good things, but there have been and people said, "What what did Trump give us? Trump did, basically didn't give us anything except for the ri- very rich." But uh, Biden actually has done some things for us against the Republicans who were all voted no. And once we actually got this stuff, the Republicans that are voting no on it 
are saying, oh yeah, we got this for you. We did this for you. They're, they're taking credit for someone else's work. Exactly. And what's interesting, and I've seen some of this online, where they are being called out. For oh yeah. It, where, oh, don't take credit for this. You voted against this. And I, I think that's a, a big deal that we need to be aware of what are people voting for, what are they voting against, yeah. and what are they are. And I think, unfortunately, the saddest part about the Biden administration, the Biden Demo um, the Democrats in the House and the Democrats in the Senate, is this bizarre belief that these Republicans will work with you yeah, they when might. they will line up lock, stock, smoke, and barrel jerk you around in ways you just don't know. They literally and then when said it's finally out. time, they all vote against it because it's your idea, not ours. Um, Mansion and Cinema yeah. voting against us again? But, I think Mansion was the, given the actual GOP we how they rule the country in uh, 2030. And so, boy, hitch on, hitch the ride now because we're going to overthrow the government. And he's Manchin got a, said, he's got a yacht. I I'm deserve in. a yacht. <laughs> Why would you have a yacht in West Virginia? I, oh, no, it's Mansion. I meant Mansion. Is he in West Virginia? He's in West Virginia. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, living on it's nice. It's like sleeping on a water. Is there water? Right? Is there water in West Virginia? Hey, uh, I, I, I have a quick call back, back to something. Yeah. Ben Midler tweeted, ben Midler tweeted something out. Oh. Uh, she tweeted a, a meme. Uh, it's got these white M&Ms. And it says, Mars has relented and will now add a Tucker Carlson M&M. They're all white, extra bitter, would melt, will melt down when mixed with multicolored M&Ms. Wait, I missed that last okay. time. Mars has relented and will now add a Tucker Carlson M&M. <laughs> They're all white, extra bitter, and will melt down when mixed with multicolored M&Ms. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> that Midler for the win. And, and, um, and by the way, Manchin li doesn't live in West Virginia. His yacht is on the Potomac. Okay. So, yeah. oh, and real quick. I was the rep of West Virginia. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Um, I just followed him. Chicago Bears now has a new GM. His name is Ryan Poles. And Does he like to win? Uh, hopefully. I hope so. Uh, would be you nice. like to see a picture of Ryan Poles? Do I? Well, he's pretty handsome. He can pull my Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. So, yeah. Ryan Poles, new GM. There you go. And he will be probably get his uh, blue check mark within the next few days. So What's the go. blue check mark? Uh, verified accounts. Okay. Yeah. So now they actually oh, let me get get on the radio. I'm sorry. They actually do sell white M and M's. I uh, I want to say when I was in St. Louis in September of last year, I saw at Walmart that there was some kind of white M and M, and I don't know what the flavoring was inside, but I chose not to buy said white M and M's. But they they do exist. They they naturally exist. Now I guess if you were a white M and M, I could forgive the white shoes. But brown M&M and green M&M with a white shoe, I, I'm concerned. <laughs> and then Darren, as a gay to gay, yeah. I will be going to Palm Springs at the end of, of February, going all, all then up to Eureka, California. I bought, because it was on sale, because I like clearance. Uh, clearance. Um, you got clearance, Clarence? I got clearance, honey. I, got, I like my clearance. So I bought some peach shoes. <laughs> and they're cute, like peach van, casual walking yeah. shoes. And they're really cute. But it's like, what do you wear with peach shoes? And I, I'm, I'm going to always wear jeans because I, I like to wear my jeans. So I'm like, well, a blue jean. And then like, well, I have the peach shoe. So do I just put a nice light blue outfit together with a peach shoe? Do I look for a t-shirt or outer shirt that matches that peach? Color me peach and black. Color me <laughs> peach and black. Back? Back? Crucial! <laughs> Think I want you. So, so I am in that moral dilemma of what do I wear with the peach shoe? Um, now, Rachel. I could help. <laughs> I could help. Your local friendly artist is available to help you color match. Okay. Now, my other shoe, my uh, red and blue van, 
shoe that I got recently with the white. Like, that will go with everything, and I've got many, many compliments. I got compliments on that shoe from a man who went out with uh, Darren Marshall, mm -hmm. actually. He uh, tried to get that boarded milk, but Cor then left home realizing he lactose intolerant. Corey, <laughs> Corey suggests that you do a peach shoes mint suit. Oh. Do it. <laughs> Light green and peach. Yeah, I mean, on the mint, color wheel, they're green. opposite, so they will work together. I, I, I don't know what this Corey looks like, so I don't trust his job. <laughs> well, he there. looks kind of like Jamie Dornan. Yeah. Oh, Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, uh, yeah. I was thinking the fall. I've never seen Fifty Shades, but yeah, that guy. I haven't seen Fifty Shades either. And Jamie not... Dornan <laughs> look good shirtless. Like, don't get me wrong. I just don't know if I take him for fashion advice. Hey, I have some more breaking news. Okay, <laughs> go on, Darren Marshall. I'm sorry. Apparently, Alex Jones was deposed by the January 6th committee, and he uh, took the fifth a hundred times. Yeah. That's what they're all going to do. And honestly, yeah. like, ugh. Are any of them going to end up in jail? Are any of them? Are we going to get them in jail? Well, see, here's, here's the funny well, thing. The plus... here's, here's the most ironic thing about this whole thing. When Trump first became president, he said he didn't trust anybody that takes the fifth because he thought that meant that it was a sign of guilt. Yeah, but that's only true if it's not on his team. Yeah. He he said that to, to insult somebody, and he's he never fully thinks about what he's saying or talking about. It's it's the equivalent of you know if if Roadrunner didn't want people to attack him he wouldn't run freely, and that's why Wiley Coyote is justified to invest in consumerism to <laughs> buy products from Acme yeah. and hopes they will work. Yeah. <laughs> um, now Rachel, I have a note here and I have to call you out on some stuff. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. You're having I love this a part. license plate situation. Yes, my license plate. Oh, oh my god. Wow. Okay, and it's okay. getting settled though. So yay. yay. So what happened is I finally got my veteran plate, and um, you get to pick for like whatever it is. Like it's a four letter digit plate, and like good and God willing, God bless America, veteran plate. Yeah, but only four <laughs> letters. It'd be like G W. DV or whatever. I don't know what she said. Um, but anyway, so my gamer tag is like Blue Storm. Um, and Blue has been a nickname of mine. You know, Bloomstrom is how it's pronounced. So I tried to do B-L-U-E. No. B-L-E-U. No. B-L-E-W. No. Then I did B-L-O-O. -O. And I'm like, that spells blue. And then I get it in the mail. And it looks like it says blood. And there's a bullet hole in my car. And there are definitely, like, gang activities in my neighborhood. And I'm like, I called them. I was like, I cannot put this on my car. I'm going to die. Like, if my car had, like, I thought about, like, painting the bumper blue or something. Like, send it home. Um, but I was like, I am too afraid to put this on my car you, and drive it. You need to get your uh, license plates changed to Crips. Yeah, no. No, 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 no. So they are changing it for me. They sent it out immediately when I, so I was like, my car has a bullet hole in it already. Like, that's how much activity is in the area. So can you please not make me drive around where it looks like um, I'm in a gang or... Glamorous Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it looks like it's B-L-O-O, -O, you know, and the O's on license plates look kind of like these. Are those the license plates currently on your vehicle? No, I have temp. Okay. No, I have temp. All right. Because I was wondering if that's why the people behaved the way they did. We, like, oh, hey, here, here we come some blood. Like, you in the wrong neighborhood. I just... <laughs> no. No, that's what I said. I got them in the mail, and I was like, I am not. <laughs> I am not putting these on my car. I'm not going to do it. And it was so nice when I got the guy on the phone yesterday. They, oh. like, immediately understood. They're like, okay, yeah, we'll send you something immediately. Because I don't think I was actually... Because I've had a problem getting my plate for the last year. Uh, and I probably wasn't supposed to get another plate, but... And he was like, do you want to pick it? I said, obviously, that is too much for me. <laughs> I've already created a disaster for myself and put myself in danger. I'm going to just stick with random. Now, if it comes it's back C-O-O-T, <laughs> are you okay? Yeah. If it comes back as... Yeah, coot. What do you got? What? I'm trying to... B-U-M-M, bum. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, pick them out. I'll, I'll take a lot of that over. I'll take blood <laughs> or crib. <laughs> um, uh, <sighs> something else happened over the weekend that I forgot to mention. Um, at Mar-a-Lago, 
uh, Trump went into the dining room while he was dining, and he stood there, and then he started to try, he had to literally wave his hands around to try to get people to uh, applaud him while he was in the Oh, my God. I, like, that's somebody, like, take, take Grandpa back to his room at the nursing home. Yeah. Like, can we just okay. stop? As someone who, who, who been nice to both of y'all, what do I need to do to have, like, y'all always applaud me and appreciate me whenever <laughs> I, I walk in the room? And now I know I do take a lot of potty breaks. But, like, when I come back from the job, like, and I open the door, like, what will you, what do I need to do to make every, sure, like, everyone's like, yay! And if I have to pay edibles, I understand. Come in with more alcohol. You asked. <laughs> Dial it up, honey. Dial it up. Bring some food. I don't know. No, no, make no. some homemade lasagna. I'll applaud that. And Miss <laughs> Bloomstrom, Rachel Bloomstrom, before uh, I notice, it's like when we, we hang out next time and you don't drive, you've been like, well, I'm going to bring the vodka. Yes. Yeah. Vodka's so this the vodka I gave you for Christmas. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a secret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's the vodka you gave yeah, me for I Christmas. Yeah, I failed that time. Okay. <laughs> I actually still have like two bottles and then there was certain co-hosts that we deal with that I meant to give them a Christmas present and then it didn't happen. And now like, you know, he's an atheist and the holiday was so long ago. Like we yeah. can move on, right? Like we can yeah. move on. Okay. Hey, um, another uh, callback uh, because this I just got this on Twitter. Uh, CNN's Jim Acosta, uh, he defended President Biden after what happened uh, yesterday with Fox News reporter Peter Ducey. Jim Acosta said that Trump called him a lot worse than that yeah. and, apo and never apologized to him. Yeah, no, I don't even, did. you know what, though, to be honest, like, this is so minor, I don't even know why, after we laugh about that guy being called a stupid SOB, which is funny, like, there's really nothing else to say about it, because, like, who cares, there's no consequences, F that guy. Yeah. Like, there's... To me, there's more important things. Like, I don't even care what Jim Acosta has to say about it, honestly. I just think it's funny. Trump, Trump literally. I know. And it's going to stay in the media. This yeah. is going to stay there. They're, they they look for something to find and criticize and build up and, and then well, produce. See. And I think, and this is something that we have to recognize Trump gave us the power, <laughs> which is, I don't like you. I don't have to act like I do. We're not friends and then trump gave us the power of i can actually physically and verbally ruin your life as much as i want to because i'm in this position of power i now, mean that is literally how he was raised his father taught him to be a bully so every yeah. circumstance that is who he is and that is what he does and he's just a pathetic okay. bully. And, and Fox, gonna... Fox News, if he felt the question was inappropriate, it's it's very valid. As someone who is a huge Madonna fan, Tracy Lords fan, there was some interviewer in Details Magazine in 1994 and 1995 that good, bad, or indifferent, when Madonna is coming to meet you to talk about her new album, she doesn't want to talk about Warren Beatty movies, Sean Penn movies, which movie she likes better, and she definitely doesn't want to be reminded of if or if not she has had abortions. You don't talk to people like this and this is what fox news has allowed this is what trump lil a uh, lil jeff sessions all his insults have allowed and now the other side is like oh oh you're wittier than us oh oh you're more aggressive than us and that is how bullying yeah. works you have to understand they are the people, and I grew up with this, and I hate this, and I hate this environment because it is the bullying where they hit you, they hit you, they call you names, they harass you at home, they hit you, they hit you, they hit you. You finally say, you need to stop. You get to the count of three. You hit me three more times, and it's over. Oh. Well, they then hit you one, and you go, that's one. They hit you two, you go, that two. They hit you three. You beat the crap out of them, and then society, the school, the school yeah. board, they mama, they daddy, come knocking on your door. And when you get to that point, it's obviously you don't have a foundation of protection. They come at you saying you overreacted. And the answer is, no, I told you, if you call me that three three more times, I mean, that's, 
I will hurt you. I mean, that is that more is than, truth. you know, but there's a thing, you know, you're talking about basic bullies and then we move into terrorism and they go and terrorize these people. Yeah. They use their bully tactics <sighs> to terrorize people over political agendas. And that's why pretty much all of them are terrorists now. Yeah. I've decided it. I don't know why I would refer to them as anything else. Okay, one one last mm. thing uh, before we go, because I want to spend oh, a little is. bit of time on this. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the one bad thing that Trump Whoa. really did Whoa. for the media... Just media, the one. At, at this moment. This, at, oh, okay. At, in this moment that we're living in, is that because he caused so much controversy that the media is trying to manufacture controversy for ratings now instead of actually doing their job. And, you know, Biden is not as bad as the media is making him out to be. <laughs> but they want him to be that bad so they well, can they get Well, they did that ratings. to Obama. They did they that, that to Obama. Obama too. Too. The tan suit thing. I know, you, right? Everybody still to this day remembers the tan suit because they talked about it like it was more outrageous than the green M and M changing pair of shoes. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, but it's, but it's mm. like you know, you, when does it stop becoming fair and balanced news when well, you are saying I prefer? I I think we need legal protection around the word news in media. Yeah, I, it needs I, to be legally There actually defined. used what, to be a law. What Fox News per put on the air January 6, 2021, and the people who knew and complained to Trump to please stop it, don't don't ruin your legacy, we don't approve of this, and then they appeared that night to say something contradictory? I agree with you, Rachel Bloomstorm. You're not reporting news. No. And what has happened... And That's got to be like libel, God. right? It comes with consequences? I don't think I understand it's how libel It's something works. Reagan did. Something, something. Yeah, it's it was, something it was... Reagan did that messed up the news. The news actually <laughs> had... <laughs> actual qualifications until yes. Reagan signed something during his senility. Something that he, he's been kicked off Fox News because sexual harassment, whatever his name was. He started in the 90s and what it is, is every outrage is justified. Every outrage is equal. I drink too much, I own this. Rachel, I God bless you on your driving and I bow down and you haven't killed me yet, and I say thank you. Um, you shouldn't and, be concerned. I've never. And the person downstairs is raping uh, a, a six year old. They're all issues, and we have to recognize. Rachel, if you were a better driver, may, actually, you actually are a good driver. If you were a slow, steady, old woman driver, <laughs> Sunday driver who did care about where you were going to go and waited patiently, you'd never get anywhere. People wouldn't rape children. Yeah. And if I didn't drink too much, he would not feel inspired to rape children. At no point are we recognizing, like, why is this man touching a child? And Rachel, you and I should look at each other going, why aren't we on a phone calling somebody to say, hey, uh, I walked in on something. I don't know what that is. And uh, y'all should investigate it. Yeah. Like, and that is what we have. We're, we're all caught up. Uh, all outrage is equal. And I feel, and sadly. That's just not true. Even with someone who watches Rachel Maddow or Seth Meyers, it's one of those we jump directly to outrage or why we're angry. And maybe we need to take a step back and just say, is it okay? If Rachel finally, like as I'm casually sitting here, decides to set up and hit me with her chair, we need to take a step back and not scream about women's angers or is this gay bashing. Maybe It's sad that we have to go like... Maybe people should hit each other with chairs? I don't know. This ain't Jerry Springer, 1998. <laughs> like, do we really need to throw furniture at each other? But what if somebody came in and holding a paternity test and they're like, Thomas, you are the father. And I would definitely have to, like, flip a chair and, like, I don't know what's happening anymore if Thomas is the father of I, whose baby? Whose baby are we even whoo, talking about? Who? Honey, I, I have to say, number one, I remember when those were popular, and so I have to always remember when the camera is, I want to be the girl who runs off going, no, 
and I fall down because you always fall down. And then you have to stick your butt to the camera. Like you just have to like just shake your tush at the camera. <laughs> and oddly enough, the the girl I dated when I was sixteen. <laughs> was this the last hope? Last hope, honey. <laughs> last hope. Um, she dated a guy after me, and he knocked her up. Now oh. there was some like overlap of time like i i don't know where her child was born but you know there was a mild concern but uh this all took place in colorado and basically what colorado says is the day you file for uh child support is the day that you start collecting the child support and blessedly no one ever filed and, uh, and i ain't got no child i have not reproduced Praise Jesus, the gene pool dies with me. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, you are, the, I haven't watched Mori in a while. Yeah, yeah, inspired me. Like, do I need to watch Mori? I know, Because I've been wanting to explore, like, Je I found, like, 1998 oh, Jerry Springer. That like, would be Prima. fun. Uh, we could do a Jerry Springer <laughs> short series podcast or something. Jerry, Jerry. <laughs> I was gonna, hey. I was gonna ask you, Darren. Oh, yeah. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but nothing ever came of those Fauci emails, right? That everyone's like, no, they're full of incriminating stuff. And like here it has been groomed yeah. and there's still nothing. Yeah. No, there's nothing. Um, hey, speaking of uh, nothing, uh, QAnon, uh, March, uh, Taylor Green uh, says Biden wants to go to war with Russia because Ukraine has the dirt on Hunter Biden. Well, Ukraine okay. has dirt on Trump also. So does Russia. All right. So like, what is, what is their point? Yeah, the point what, is... That really? They, we're we're going to okay. go to... They don't okay. have... They, they, the point is they really don't have dirt on Hunter Biden. They're using Hunter All right. Biden again. Are so. we okay with a very strong, powerful foreign country deciding to go in and take another foreign country and say you belong to us and we'll kill your people? Are we okay with this? Yes, no? No. no. Um, I know during the age of colonization, this happened in the United States, it happened to Africa, happened to India, uh, Great Britain showed up in places and said, oh, I like this land. Oh, oh, you're living here. We'll move you. Well, Are we okay with that's this? That's who we've also been. You know, and that's the problem with, like, because we are hypocrites. We literally, uh -huh. we're in 80 different countries. Nobody else has a military base here. We have military bases in 80 different countries that don't necessarily need us. And we'll say for media purposes that we went there to help them. But sometimes it's to just topple their government yeah, so that we can. we're going to be in charge. Like, yeah. so it's really hard to, to feel high and mighty when talking about Russia, yeah. knowing who we are and we have to understand also that in 1938 i think it was when the nazi party took over germany and then they took over poland yes and the united states reaction was eh, it's only poland so do we shrug it's only the ukraine is it okay that we sit back as a foreign power overpowers a smaller country are we okay with this? I mean, we said um, no for Kuwait, I, I but just, we all know why we're in Kuwait. I'm just completely grateful that Trump did not buy Greenland. <laughs> it was never up for sale. <laughs> it was not going to happen. <laughs> you know, uh, some, my, my boyfriend made me sit through, like, season 12 of RuPaul Drag Race. That's the one with Sherry Pie, where they disqualified her because she convinced wannabe actors to send her masturbation videos. By the way... If you're auditioning for a role and they ask you to send the nude pics, you don't show the goods until you're in person and some kind of contract's been signed, okay? <laughs> like, you don't send a masturbation video and hope you're going to be on some Broadway show. What kind of Broadway show was that? Uh, he'll be coming around. Uh, I was thinking hair. Do they masturbate in hair? No, they just all got naked. <laughs> they just all dance, naked. Like they, okay. Um, hedonism. It's, they didn't bathe, so when they got naked and danced in the rain, it's like, hopefully that'll fix the smell. But anyway, so it's season 12, RuPaul Drag Race. And where am I going with this? Oh, my God. So it's Sherry Pie. They edited her out. They forgot. Oh, is she the one who's like, am I the villain? I don't think I'm the villain. Is it me? <laughs> No, I don't think I'm the villain. Am I? That might be someone else. A lot of queens did that. I, I have lost my train It's of just thought. a really popular TikTok sound. I think it was that I, one. I, I don't think know. so. There's. Now, now, now. I'm sorry, I derailed you. Darren, were you into Sherry Pie? What were we mm, arguing yeah. about? I. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, you know, we're actually COVID quarantine at, where yeah, life was we're better actually and at now the we're end of the show, so do uh, it. Yeah, we're at the, at the end of the show. So, uh, Rachel, what's oh, going on? Oh, yeah. Uh, again, my name is Rachel Bloomstrom. I am the founder and co-artistic director of the Quarantine Queens Theater Company. Um, look for us this uh, next Saturday on Facebook. Um, we are performing Twelfth Night by Shakespeare with our director. It's her first de directing debut. Ooh. It's Sydney Hansen. Yes. She has done all of our fight choreography. She's amazing. I love her. She's located here in Chicago. And um, we're hoping, like, not for this piece, but we're hoping to be filming some fight scenes for mm -hmm. up-and-coming productions that we do, if there's going to be fighting in them. So that those will be pre-recorded instead of... Anyways, yeah, so come and check us out. Saturday, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's about a 90-minute show. Um, Six ninety nine in tickets, the price of a coffee. You know, you can <laughs> yeah. you, you can like get a coffee from Starbucks and also watch this. It's you know same thing. Um, and yeah, we'd love to have you show up. I'm playing a pretty funny character. I'm pretty gross, and I'm pretty proud of it. Yeah. So. Amen. <laughs> Thomas. And I'm Thomas Bottoms. I do the radio show Bottoms of the Barrel on Q4 Radio AM 1680, Q4.org, every Saturday, 5 to 7 p.m. Central. You can find us also on Facebook. That's Bottoms of the Barrel with an S on Facebook. And you can find me on Twitter, Thomas Bottoms. Twitter. And uh, the show this coming Saturday for the 29th will be a pre-recorded show, but we'll all be back in the studio on February 5th, hopefully joined by uh, Darren Marshall and Rachel Bloomstrom. Yep. I was sad. I was wanting to come straight after it's the our, show. It's our current events with a pop varnish. Aiming low for success. How low did we aim? Was there a show? show? Yes. Success! success! Yay! And Darren Marshall. Yes! Thank you. Um, I'm doing this show and your show, and... Uh, that's about it. <laughs> can, they can they still find you in that one alley, Darren? You still <laughs> working in that alley? The one that I that you gave to me because you got tired of it. Oh, is that because they moved me out of the alley into the house? Is that what you're going to say? You're going to go speak to Denzel? He knew what was best for market value. Okay. Do you now have a roof over your head and food in your belly? You better go hit that block. I'm gonna tell Golden Ticket how I'm gonna tell Golden Ticket how you're talking to him, yeah. Thomas. You're gonna be in big words. trouble. Yeah. Well, he gonna you're gonna be in trouble. He gonna say his dog lucky on me. I know I'll be lucky if that dog try to bite. Luck, oh. luck. <laughs> you <laughs> should meet my dog though. I think who I'll has help. who has over under a thousand by uh, thousand followers by Valentine's Day for Lucky? He's at six hundred. I've decided I found I, I found my dog's profile, so now I'm going to compete. We have three hundred, but I've been an inactive, <laughs> so youth he's and, a handicap. Youth and rabies makes you famous. <laughs> anyway, that's it for the show, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week, and uh, good night, Chicago. Good night, good night, good night. Hey, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, I appreciate it. Sorry, I couldn't respond to everything because there is a little bit of a lag. Hi, Obviously, hi, hi. Um, yeah, yeah. I knew there was a, I knew there was a doctrine about um, news, which is why I was just saying we need it again. It's really important. Um, let's see, anything else? Um, I'm sure you heard oh, you. that thank I do have a show coming a up, show. and thank you. Oh, my. yeah, thank you. there's the studio from this direction. Yes, so, I yeah, I love having y'all come yeah. and Ooh, interact. I remember, yeah. uh, and I'm sorry if I embarrassed you, Corey. Ooh, I, didn't. I, didn't. <laughs> I was just soothing. Well, I wasn't. I mean, you do look kind of like Jamie Dornan, though. Yeah, so that's the thing. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I will Thank talk you to y'all so later. Um, Adam, when are you going to? Adam, let me know next time you're going to Jazz Night, by the way. Okay, bye.